Good morning. This is Judy at Artistic Artifacts, and uh, for the moment, I'm in Alexandria, Virginia. So uh, I, it's cold up here, you know, it gets to 80 degrees in the middle of the day, and well, not quite 80, but feels like it, and then it's, you know, 60 degrees at night, so we're in that transition. And um, I tend to slow down a little bit when it gets a little bit colder, and I want to do a little more hand stitching, and just kind of relaxing. Um, so I'm, we're talking about wood blocks and hand stitching today. And I have created these little books from my hand stitching motifs that um, I wanted to just show you a little bit about how I do them and um, what the process is. So we have a couple um, of announcements. Uh, I will be in uh, leaving for India on Sunday, so yes, tomorrow. <laughs> Don't ask me if I'm packed, because I'm not. And um, so I'm, you know, that's part of the next four weeks. Will be um, Facebook Lives and comments sold that will be um, run by my staff. So I hope that you support them in that. We do have a comment sold on right now. That um, and comment sold requires that you go to um, your app store and download the Artistic Artifacts app. Many times the comment sold will be one off items where we have international created items, but we only have one of them. Um, this is on the app. This is how you can buy these batik panels. These are brand new and they're just introduced, so we introduce them first on the app and it's really pretty easy and very very safe to shop on the app so you go to your app store whether you're an iphone or an android and you look search for artistic artifacts and you hit the little get button and it will uh, um, ask you to create an account and then all of the items that still have inventory that we've featured over the last year at least are in there and you have the opportunity to buy them. There's also a video that you can um, click on a product and, and it'll take you to the video where we talk about it. Maybe I've talked about how it was made, what the, what the, what's, how it's used, what I did before, it, where did I find it, that type of stuff. So it's a very useful way to do in addition to these hand-drawn um, batik panels are baskets. We have not sold our Ghana, our baskets that have been made in Ghana, we have not sold them on our website. So the only place you can get them right now is on our app and there is one basket per pattern and they've all been listed. So there's multiple shapes, I think there's four shapes and multiple colors so you can look at them but they're really great baskets we we use them all the time store your threads put your knitting in there your cross stitch whatever it's got a really nice handle on it it's wonderful but the app store is where you can buy those or you can come into the store and we have plenty of them here so um please do that but today um let's see did i forget any announcements kyle Handmade market. Oh yes, I keep forgetting the handmade market because um, <laughs> we I are don't. we are having a handmade market. Um, this is a little bit of a tradition for um, we we were doing it before the pandemic. We have many 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 customers across the country, but also locally, who shop in our store and support our store, and they sell their work. So we offer them an opportunity to sell in our building. It's on the second floor. There is not an elevator, I'm sorry, but there are stairs. And um, we offer them the opportunity to sell their wares for a day, which will be November 12th, at a very, very you know, inexpensive booth rate, so to speak, or table rate, very, very inexpensive. And um, I think that there will also be a meeting of the Modern Quilt Guild here as well that day. You can bring a chair and meet with them. They'll be in the warehouse, so a um, little bit more airy space, and that's what they wanted. And then also, I'm sure we will have specials and things in the store. So um, we'll 
you know, always have a pop-up sale or something like that at the time. So November 12th, I keep forgetting because I'll still be in India, but everyone else will be here and it will be a really wonderful, exciting day. So if you are in the area, can make the run, please come see us. Um, we would love to have you visit us. So that is November 12th. We're also gearing up for our annual fundraiser. I will let you know that it won't be holiday stockings this year, So, but stay tuned. Make sure that you receive our newsletter where we'll make the announcements as to when you can um, buy a chance to win. Oh, it's a surprise. I'm not going to tell you right yet. You have to stay tuned. All right? So um, we'll, we'll announce who our fundraising is going to go for and what we are um, doing uh, in up new upcoming newsletter. So please stay tuned and um, help us uh, support a worthy cause. There's so many of them, it's so hard to choose, um, but we do the best we can. So be, we appreciate previous contributions. We um, look forward to your continued support. So on to today. So um, I really have kind of gotten addicted to these little fabric books. So um, this, is, this is the one I'll just show you real quickly. Um, and then I'll talk to you about how I got to this book. So this is the little one. All right. So this is, I've, sh I've shown this before, but just bear with me. These are woodblock prints that I machine stitched over. And then this is mermaid. So I use some sequins. This is a woodblock print behind here on a uh, gel press. Um, this one is a woodblock print that I actually did machine stitching. So this book was a little bit more machine stitching than, than hand stitching, but I'll hold to show you hand stitching too. Uh, woodblock print, love the Nautilus. Um, this one as well. So this just screamed French knots at me. So this is a little bit of a hand stitch. And they are attached as what I would consider an applique. So, uh, and again, I'll show you my steps when I get there. Uh, pearl buttons. I mean, who, who isn't in love with pearl buttons? And um, here's another one. This was a big shell that we had. And then this is... This is machine stitched here. This is hand stitched here. This is coral. And it's just couch. So it's stitched with a, uh, a larger size thread. And then I couched it with a smaller size thread. Um, and here's some more turtles. And I just recently found turtle buttons. I haven't had a chance to put the buttons in, but they're going in here. All right, so this is the finished project, so to speak. So how did I get there? Well, there's lots of wood blocks. It's just screams. So here is a circle sit, set. Here is a paisley set. Here, where I took all my favorite paisleys that I had and I had to make a set. Here is our collective inspired blocks. Some wonderful flowers. I'll show you what I did with those, too. Those are great. And there's a small and a large set of this one. Um, I didn't bring them both up. And then I was walking through the store on the way to our studio, and I was like, oh, my goodness, these birds just scream stitch me. They just scream stitch me. Um, so those I thought would be really great. And all of these are on the website, so you can purchase them. And this one is some of what I did with the shells. So this was the one, the book that I just showed you, I used some of these guys, like see you can recognize the turtle. I'll show you where I did with the seahorse. This is the coral, um, jellyfish and fish. So this is the sea life box. So it all starts with the blocks. Nice, oh, yes, that's really pretty. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, oh, is Naya watching? Yep. Naya, I think I found a broccoli tree block. She'll know what that means. That's an that's from Italy. We were, had these beautiful trees, and they reminded us of her, her block broccoli. 
um, the head of the broccoli. <laughs> so, all right. So I just take pieces of fabric. Again, I, I block print and I have no purpose. Well, okay, I kind of have an idea. I'll lie to you. But normally when I'm block printing, I just don't have a purpose. I just print. So here's some woven. Here's some uh, muslin. Here's some tilde. Here's a little batik. I don't do a lot of batik. Batik's harder to stitch through. Here's some more woven. Uh, shot cotton, cave shot cottons, we have those as well. Um, this is a tilde um, shirting. So I just go through and block print these. So I'm using my paint. So I'm using my paint. We can use either artistic artifacts, textile paint that's fluid, or you can use the little bit thicker artistic artifacts, textile paint in the, in the two ounce jars. But what is the most important item in the whole process is this little four dollar mat and it's not thin it's not l the little stuff it's got some really nice density to it um, so you put that down we put our fabric over top of it and there's other videos that show you this fabric on top of it we take a sponge and stamp and then we put it down on the mat. If you try to stamp on a hard surface, it will not work. Okay, so this little mat is, is really pretty important. Okay, so I have wood blocks and you can see I, these are all, I left the paint on it so you could see. We've done some things with these great birds. Naya, don't you think this looks like a broccoli tree? broccolini tree, an elephant. Um, so these are some, and did some hearts. I decided we created a heart box. We had not done it very much, um, hearts in the past. They kind of came once, in, and it, I think the timing's really great. Mel Beach is running a, um, was in quilting arts, and it's a challenge with using hearts. And, I, and so we thought, wow, that's perfect timing. We have the wood blocks that will help you with Mel's uh, challenge. I think it was in the most recent um, Quilting Arts, but I'm sure you can find it if you go to the Quilting Arts website. You'll find that there. Okay, so I've printed it. Then I will see, you can see I've prepped this because I'm looking for things to take with me to India. So these have all kind of been prepped for India. So we have a flannel on the back. So, and how I've gotten the flannel on the back, you don't need this, I just like it, um, is that you, we've added Misty Fuse to the back of the fabric, then we put flannel on it that fused to the Misty Fuse. So it's the printed fabric, Misty Fuse, um, and then the flannel. So it comes up, so it's soft on your hand when you're stitching, and it had, now I have it interface. So every one of these is prepped that way. Now you don't have to do that. I just like to do that, but everything is done that way. And it doesn't add any extra weight. I can still create a quilt out of it. I still can do a lot of things, and it's not going to affect the depth of your quilt, if that makes sense. So that's what I did on this one. So here's my owls. And I, I would block printed all my owls, and I prepped the fabric the same way I did. I took the um, batik, I put fissy, misty fuse on it, and flannel. And as you can see, it didn't add to the depth of it, it just stabilized the stitching. Does that make sense? You can see my little owls. And I did leave a couple on each row just so you could see what they started with. So that was the shape and that was the paint on it. Now, in my book, once, so I'll take this with me and I'll just stitch on them. Um, I'll stitch on hopefully a lot of them. 
And then what will happen is when I come back, I'm going to do a paisley book because, of course, I'm going to India where all the paisleys are. So I'll probably just do a book of all these really cool little paisleys. And these will get cut out like an applique. So it might be that it's a square and I show the green. It might be that I cut right up to the pattern or my stitching. But I will place them in my book. So here's the different book, which this one is, you I've shown you this guys before. So this is my rest of my C. So this is what I did with these guys. This has been hand stitched and machine stitched and then I cut it out and I fuse it to my book page. So this makes it a very mobile situation and I don't have to plan, I can, I can, my next steps come after I have created my stitching. So, um, you know, I kind of use similar colors, but there really wasn't any planning until it was done. So this one is here. This was a um, machine stitched one as well. And there's my bone fish that you saw. I always, fish always turn backwards, but that's a minor. I guess I have to put, stitch their tails down. And then um, this is also, see I made it a square applique and then used the edges on it. But So I took all of these things individually after I had stitched them and I collaged them together. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions, Kyle? Um, people love it. <laughs> okay. Grandma said your background is her skirt. Background is her skirt. I think it's on the table. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Grandma. <laughs> okay. Some random stuff in the comments. She's interacting with the group. Okay, so this is the new book that I did with based with the Cave inspired Cave Collective inspired blocks. So. This was one, the, the dogwood was really great. They, we also have a, um, a lot of the calf ribbon. So this one is here, and, and I'm using a lot of vintage calf fabrics um, that I inherited from a friend. So um, here, this bird, I block printed the bird, hand stitched it on wool, actually, and I fused the back and then trimmed it. It's really easy to trim it, if you fused it first, and then it does, prevents the raveling from it. This is another bird block set that we have. This is a chrysanthemum from the, the um, cave inspired. And then here's leaves. So I stamped a whole bunch of leaves on a just a piece of fabric that was hand dyed, and I decided to use some machine stitching. Well, as you can see, I changed the shape of the leaves a little bit, and I changed the colors in the thread. And this is a pattern stitch that's in the machine. And I got caught short on this one. This fabric I didn't have very much, so I added a little bit. And there's nothing in here. In the middle of these pages is a Peltex, but I added like a ruffle, so to speak, but it didn't ruffle. And if you can see the way, so my page is made like this, one, two, three, four. And I just stitch down the middle to put them in. So I don't even have to know what order I'm working in until I've got my pages done. And a lot of times, like you'll see, I did a lot of sewing on this one. So there's no sewing on the back of this one and I've covered it. So I wait to put this fabric on until I've gotten this part done. And then I have my back here. Um, this is the dogwood really was kind of fun flower. And then this is a piece that we did that was on the gel press with wood blocks. And then here's some more different dogwoods. French knots. A lot of this can be done just with a single stitch, just with a straight stitch. So a straight stitch you can make a cross, straight stitch can be long and short. There's lots of things that you can do with that. So and here's this, the gel press piece. All right, and then 
this one is my favorite, Sunflower. So this is all using K strip pieces. This is one of the decorative patterns on the 770 K edition Bernina machine. And it, I say 770 because it's a nine millimeter width decorative stitch versus the 5.5, which is on the 475. So this one was a lot of fun to do. Chris did some stitching, some French knots. I did some others. There's a lot going on in this page, that's for sure. And so that's, it all was done as an applique type of item. And then there's my, the back of my book. Okay, now you can see I've got pages that stick out. My pages are all the different sizes. It doesn't matter. You just put them together. It's just fun that it's different. Um, and then, so I, what I have um, is, I'll show you in a minute how I put the pages in. I left two out, but I kind of forgot this side of the table. Um, so what I do when I stitch, I use tulip needles. So tulip chenille needles are what I use. So there's a mixed box and then there's different sizes. 18 is very large, 22 is a little bit smaller. This, I always tell people who have not used these before to start with the mixed box because it just gives you a general idea on what these are and then you can figure out what your favorite needle size is and go back and buy your needle. So that's what we use, this is what we sell, this is on the website. We also have painter's threads and we use the painter's threads in, um, on our Italy trip which will be next September. We have another one coming. Um, and I haven't quite recovered from that one yet. So here's all our painter's threads. Now painter's threads are, there's pearl, there's a flat, lots and lots of options. Um, their names are by, based on artists' names. And so once I get my ducks in a row tonight, this is gonna be my travel bag for my stitching. So this is um, just a fishing lure bag. Um, we're going to look at having some of them made a little bit better. But so this is going to be my, my, somehow my hand stitching. It might be that I take this out, but I'll, and I'm, sometimes I arrange it by type. Sometimes I arrange it by color. As you can see, I've made, arranged a mess at the moment. We got a couple of questions. Okay. Oh boy. Um, Let's see here. Sorry, scrolling. Uh huh. Um, to Linda, can you buy individual wood blocks? There are some. Yes, we do have individual wood blocks. During the pandemic, we went to um, kits um, and with boxes with a, a like-minded blocks in it, and it just we continued because it was very successful. But we do have individual blocks. They're all listed on the website that, of what we have in stock at the time, and that changes whenever we get orders. We just got a really big order right before CAFE, so probably our next order of wood blocks will be at the beginning of the year. All right, uh, and then Robin uh, asks, uh, where do you find time to do that? Uh, she re referenced to the books. Um, <laughs> we were so busy getting ready for CAFE. <laughs> we were, and I did teach a class, a CAFE weekend. It was a very short class and almost too short where we did some wood block printing. And the idea was we were gonna block print and we were gonna hand stitch and we just got to the block burning part. Um, so I was trying to complete a sample. And I try, the thing that forces me to create something or think about it or whatever is doing these Facebook Lives. If I didn't have these Facebook Lives, I would create nothing. So you guys are help keeping me motivated. Um, and then Suzanne, uh, any chance you could, uh, you'd be able to do a class like the one you did in the past with techniques, but to make it a book? Um, something like a couple of weeks doing, a couple of weeks doing a different technique every week. Yeah, I know, Suzanne. You're you're asking for that. <laughs> I know what you're asking for. I don't know. Let me see how I feel when I get back from India. <laughs> so um, yes, we did an in-person class that was a te technique class based off of the fabric embellishment book, 
And actually, a lot of things have changed since that book has come out, but it's still a really good basic one for working with embellishments. So um, yes, I know what you're asking for, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> and then how do you clean the uh, blocks? The blocks, that's a question. And as you can see, I left the paint on them. They're deeply carved. So eventually they'll get washed and I just scrub them with like a floor scrubber thing. Don't bother with the toothbrush, the nail brush, any, just go right to the big brush and um, I scrub them. But they'll never come 100% clean. You don't want to soak them in water. They do have a little bit of oil on there to prevent the water from seeping in and the paint from seeping into the wood. But um, if they really get grody, then you can take some Murphy's oil soap and put it in a pan, a very shallow amount, put the blocks face down, let them soak overnight, and then scrub them. But you don't immerse them into water. And you, uh, yeah, we don't worry about cleaning them too much. And then the last one before we move on, uh, and then we'll answer everything else at the end. <laughs> uh, your work is so beautiful. Would you consider teaching an online class on stitching techniques? Yes. We, we again, this is kind of um, the dilemma of doing things online and um, or in person. And, you know, so, yeah, I'm still kind of struggling with that and figuring it out. Now, I will tell you that um, Liz Kettle, who is a very, very good friend of mine, and um, in her website is Textile Evolution, she has what's called a Patreon group, and she does do some stitching. So if you're anxious to get started, and, and you know, as I bobble through the world, um, go ahead and look at what Liz has on her Patreon. It sounds really wonderful. Um, I know she's been doing a stitch on Tuesdays. Um, she went to Italy with me, so we team taught there and did some stitching as well. And we'll do that again next year in September. We will go back to Italy, Liz and I both, and teach. But um, yes, I, it's just the demands of running the business has reduced my amount of time to teach. Um, and, and that's the negative part of owning the business because that's the part I like is, is working with people. So that's a long answer. Please check out Liz on Textile Evolution and her Patreon group. That'll get you started immediately. And um, I highly, highly recommend her as a absolutely fabulous teacher and she's a wonderful person. So thank you for asking. And for those of you who are echoing, the online class would be great. Everything she said and the fact that her tech support mm, needs <laughs> to get it set up to where she can do it without me being here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <clears throat> I'm sure we can. Anyway, but yes, it's we're, we're working on joining the 21st second, 22nd century, whatever. Um, we're we're look, working on it. But thank you for your support and, your, and asking. That's always good to know. So we talked about painter's threads. Then we also have Wonderfill threads, and I use these quite a bit. I like them, they're very easy. Um, they are pearl cottons, and they come in five, eight, five, and three. So this is eight, and that's kind of an all-purpose thread. We have these multi-packs that are the balls. We also sell it singly in a spool, so you can get it either way. This is kind of fun, especially if you're just starting out, you can go, oh, well, I like this palette and I want to make sure, you know, this will give me enough to start with. So that's a good thing. So those are there. All right. Then um, I want to show you, and you notice how I'm using my baskets, right? These we had for a while and then they kind of disappeared and they were a little bit harder to get our hands on. And I have a very old one that they don't make these colors anymore, so I'm not going to show it to you because you're going to go, I want the orange one, but we can't get the orange one. So these, I love these. I use them. I keep my needles in it on a regular basis. So these are magnetic in here and in here. So I can plop, let's see. They hold your needles. They're absolutely wonderful. 
So we have just found these again, and um, we'll, we have them in the store. We don't have them online yet, but they will be online. So you have to watch this opening. They've made it a little bit stronger. I keep all my hand stitching needles in this all the time. I keep a set of scissors, I keep a, my needles in here, I don't put my needles anywhere else so I use it, it's absolutely great. And then I just take this with me when I'm traveling. So it comes with me and it's already ready to go, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so we really love these little boxes, so they, as I said, they're available in the store, they will be coming online as soon as we can possibly get them up. and. Um, I highly recommend having one especially it just holds everything together I don't know about you but I don't worry about what size my needle is I love needle books but I just put them in there these are great too so um, highly recommend those and then of course you know we have all kinds of little zipper bags from all over the place we have some Kaif notions that did not arrive in time for his fabulous weekend that he had with us, but we are taking pre-orders on those and we do expect them um, soon. So look in that, that area. So lots of great ways to carry things. What are those called again? They are um, Delacue Maker's Buddy Case. It's a buddy case. Because it's your buddy and you carry it with you all the time. So, Maker's Buddy Case. All right. Uh, any other questions so far? Um, oh, someone missed the uh, wood block cleaning uh, okay. explanation. Um, either you can go back or... Yeah. Um, watch the video. It's really very easy. It's not... Um, we just don't immerse the wood blocks. You can get some paint off, but I don't really worry. They're deep carved. So um, very rarely have I had wood blocks and the paint cause a problem with the print. And we used to travel and do shows. We were doing 10 and 12, 15 shows a year, and maybe at the end of the year the wood blocks got clean. So it's don't, don't sweat it. It's fine. All right? Okay, so now this is the um, K475 Special Edition machine. So we did... Cave Special Editions in a 770 with a module. There's amazing things coming down the pike from Bernina about how you can do computerized quilting. Really, really very exciting. Then we have, and that's a 9.9 .9 millimeter, so that can give you some really large decorative stitches. That's the biggest thing that I like about the 9.9. .9. So this one is a 5.5. So when we say 9.9, 9.0 and 5.5, that means that it's the width of your stitch. It's your zigzag cannot go five point, larger than 5.5 millimeters. Does that make sense? Because um, I kind of, you know, sometimes when you talk about this all the time, you assume because you're used to the terminology that somebody else is. So please don't hesitate to ask. Um, this one I've done, um, it's the, it has this great computerized screen, it has some wonderful um, decals and prints of the Millie Falor, and, it, and the whole machine is this special color, which Kafe chose. It's, and he talks about getting inspections of the pieces and making sure that they're the right color, so we, he did talk about that. Um, all right, so this page is the easiest one to get in, okay? Because you just, you know, you have to line it up a little bit. So my pages are just sneaking through out here. And I'm not a perfectionist, so I don't worry about that my pages are all the right size. I just do it. All right, so now I'm, I'm really going to try and get close to this one, which, as you know, is going to be a little tricky. And again, don't, don't have to be um, perfect in this, just kind of close. So what I have on here is I have a number four, and I have moved my needle position. So 
I'm going to come over here. Sorry. Um, I do have a needle down and I have a knot. And I've kind of creased it where I want it to go. And this is the back. And this is my scissors. And then I have this. I lift up my foot. And I, you know, got pretty close. There we go. Good enough. So I got my next one. You can see their creases are in here. So I'm going to do this book. It's going to tie off the first side. Um, even though this is a Peltex, I have not adjusted anything. I've not adjusted the pressure on the foot. I've not adjusted the tension on the machine. Nothing. Put up. And there we go. So my book is done. That's it. Simple. Again, don't sweat the small stuff. It's just for your enjoyment. So maybe I'll add some beads. May I can still add to it. I can add a little more short page. Um, you know, you do have to calculate a little extra with your cover for what is considered your spine. So I've only added about an inch. So this is probably the size of what my book is going to be. So you do need to eyeball this amount. So that's what's called the spine. And it's right here. Can you see that? Does that make sense? Where does the Peltex come in? The Peltex is in the middle. So the Peltex, which we sell by the, uh, the yard on the website, is what this is stiffening. So you can use batting. You can use Peltex. It is adding um, strength to the two pieces of fabric. So usually I fuse it. So this side would be fused and then this side would be fused. Generally, all the time, I pick one side of my page. So see, this is, this is all one what they call a signature. Okay, so I do, I decide on one that's going to have all my stitching on it. So I stitched all these leaves on here my on my Peltex it comes through on the other side you see it so then I just fuse other fabric there so that I cover my stitching it's all I did and then this one is all fused because I did hand stitching and I created the appliques and this one is all hand stitching and appliques so the Peltex is in the middle, and as I said, you can use batting too. All right, we've done um, some other Facebook Lives about the books, like we have the seashell book, I think that's on YouTube, that showed it to you. Um, and I think in that one I showed you the layering part of it, so that might be there as well. So, um, It's, it's easy. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't say that because it's not easy for everybody. I've been doing it for a while. But I think the most important thing that I have to say is it, it's, there's no perfection that can be all different sizes. It can all be different shapes. And I do. I just sit down and look at my book sometimes and, and I, I pet it. And it just, that's, that, that's the purpose. It's just to be fun, just to be comforting. And that's what I do. Yes. Uh, what size needle um, is used for a sewing machine to sew through Peltex? I use a 90. I use a 90 needle. Generally, I'm using a 50 weight thread in the top and the bottom. So um, I go to a 100 needle if I'm using a 12 weight thread, which I, I do do that. So that's the only difference. But most of the time, I'm, I've got a 90 in my machine. 
All right. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, we ran over a little bit. I'm sorry. Thank you for staying with me. Don't forget to check out our uh, comments sold store that has some unique items, including our, our new hand-drawn boutique panels and our um, baskets. And um, I will um, see you in a month. I will, it'll be that, it'll be around Thanksgiving before I get back online in video with you guys. So enjoy, be creative, and stay in touch with Artistic Artifacts. Thank you.